Hi, good morning. My name is Min, and I'm a student at Heartland College. And today, again, we have uh, the privilege of having Mr. Shin speaking to us from the Book of Psalms, and this time is from Psalms 91 and the lessons of trusting in the Lord. May you all be blessed with the message. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Does anyone remember what we talked about yesterday? I don't have my hearing aid. Speak louder. Psalm what? 15. What is it about? Psalm 15. I'm glad some of you remember what we talked about. Most people forget everything after 24 hours. <laughs> so this morning, we will turn to Psalm 91. How many of you like Psalm 91? Good. So, I hope I'm not speaking to the choir this morning. So open your Bible, Psalm 91. If you didn't bring your Bible, raise your hand. Okay, you can go ahead and this. Raise your hand. Psalm 91 says this. Read Psalm 89, 90, 91, 92, 93 Psalms. My attention has been called to these matters. Shall we not consider the word of the Lord? These things were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are to come. And should they not be the object of study in our schools? Oh, I'm in the school of Christ. The word of God contains instructive lessons given in reproof, in warning, in encouragement and in rich promises. Would not such food as this be meat, meat, food, not steak, <laughs> food in due season to the youth? That's in Bible Commentary 3, 1142, paragraph 1. <clears throat> and specifically, Psalm 91 is a most wonderful description of the coming of the Lord to bring the wickedness of the wicked to an end and to give to those who have chosen him as their redeemer the assurance of his love and protecting care. So I hope we chose him as a redeemer today, this morning. So let's read it together. Everybody has the word of God with you. We will all read it together. You know how to read the Bible. You pause at the comma. If there is one, even though it's not in the original uh, written word, and speak loudly, clearly. And when you read it alone, you read it prayerfully, meditatively, contemplatively. That's how you read. So when someone asks you to read the scriptures and you read it, as Pastor Graham says, use your diaphragm. You speak clearly, enunciate clearly. Okay, read, let's read it together. <coughs> he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him in Him I trust. Stop. As we read together, think carefully which verse jumps out at you, or which 
verse you like the most. This morning, today, right now. So think that way. Which verse you like? Some people may like everything. All 16 verse. Okay, verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold the seed of the Lord of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. When was the last time you read your Bible loudly? If you're concerned about waking up your roommate, go outside and read aloud. When I was, when I came here years ago, and I came here as a dean of men, I used to check the dome, our young men. I wanted to see who's doing the morning devotion. I go there, walk around, 4.30 in the morning. And one morning, it was so dark, and I bumped into somebody. <laughs> and he was meditating upon the word of God early in the morning. He's a pastor now. Do your morning devotions early in the morning. You read your Bible aloud. If you wake your friends, roommate up in, in your room, that's good. <laughs> read it together. So, did you choose any special verse in this Bible? I hope you have one. Let's go back to the first one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You see the Hebrew poetry here? Dwell and abide. See that? and secret place of the Most High, and then once more the, under the shadow of the Almighty. So repeat, and strength, enhance. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Psalmist is boldly saying, I will say of the Lord. Can you do that in front of people? I will say of the Lord, He is my. It's one thing to say that Lord is a refuge. 
That's another thing. He is my refuge. Do you see the difference? And we should be able to say that. My refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him, I will trust. So there are four names in the verse 1 and 2 of God. Do you see that? First one is most high. Elion. The second one is almighty. Shaddai. El Shaddai. The third one is the Lord. Yahweh. And the fourth one is my God. Elohoi. So among those four words, which one do you like? Almighty one this morning? The most high one. Or all of them. Now think about it. The important thing is that whether you can call him as your own refuge, your own fortress, your God, That is the important thing. Verse 3 and 4. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Snare, the trap. The fowler is the one that who set the trap, especially for the bird. The devil and his agents often work as the, those burden trappers. Those trappers, they work in secret. So is the Satan. Those trapper changes the method and his trap, a different trap, different method. And sometimes they use this Bow string, bow, and then set it, good. When it touches it, swing open, chokes their neck. Satan knows the history of my ancestors. Their weak points and strong points. He observed my upbringing. So he knows what kind of temptation that I would be susceptible. So use those. Sometimes those uh, duck <clears throat> hunters, they use decoy. So Satan uses the bad example to trap us. To be aware of your friends, whether they are good friends or bad friends. There are so many things. I'll just go into the... I just want to mention something about angels here. Verse 11 and 12, he shall give his child, uh, angels charge over thee. And that's the Satan used only that portion. And he left out the second portion. And Jesus didn't fall into that trap. So he used God's word to remove recover from the temptation. What he left out was to keep thee in all thy ways. <coughs> That's the important part. So I just want to mention about angels. Angels of God are watching over us. Do you like that? The hundreds of angel quotation. 
When you search the scriptures trying to be right and to do right, the angels who attend your footsteps are rejoiced. So you study your word, God's word. Angels have been come in a marked manner to those who respond to the evidence of the truth and try to obey it. And if these angels are not always seen, you are to remember that they are present just the same. Only your natural eyes are not Strengthen to discern the light. To me, the best part of this uh, Psalm 91 is 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. So 1 through 13, the third person is speaking. And 14, 15, 16, God speaks up. God talks to us. It's God's promise to and blessing over the one who loves him. Verse 14, he says what? Because he has set his love upon me. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. In 14, 15, 6, you count how many I God says. 14. Our will I deliver. Set him on a high. Honor him. Deliver. Save him. Because he has known my name. Name, character. Do you know your God's character? Do you study his character so you can copy him and behold him so by behold him we become changed verse 15 he shall call upon me I will answer him God calls us first and we need to call him every morning oh I know I have to do devotion oh it's so tired Roll over. <laughs> Get up and call him. Jesus, I need you. Without you, I cannot do anything. So when we call upon him, he says what? He doesn't say, I will think about this. <laughs> he says, I will answer him. Him, I'll be with him in trouble. Especially in trouble. He's saving me. I will deliver him and honor him. Put him on high. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. My salvation. The blessing of his presence I'll be with him. Blessing of his protection, I'll deliver him. Blessing of his promotion, I'll honor him. Blessing of his prosperity, with long life will I satisfy him. Blessing of his preservation, I'll show him my salvation. And to do that, to have that intimate Connection with God. What do we need? We need to listen to Him. We need to read what God's written has written to His loved one. That's you. Some of you will court after graduation, and you write each other love letters. Not now, later. <laughs> And you read, you read, until that page is so thin, you can look through. Oh, God's word should be like that. He's, this is his love letter to me, to us. And speaking to God by praying, thinking of God in unoccupied moments. When you're not busy, you think about it. Mm -hmm. Those of you who received that 
piece of scriptures, put it in your pocket, take it out. Read just one verse. Speaking about God to other people, witness, adoring, I love you, Lord. I want to love you more. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. By reading his word more. And thinking about his word more. And by giving to God and making glad, sacrifice. Sacrifice for God. Go somewhere where hot water is not always available when you take morning shower. Go somewhere. You don't know where your next meal is coming. And go somewhere where you have to live through the weeks and weeks with the clothes on your back. Live a sacrificial life. That way, we will know just a little bit of how much Jesus Christ sacrificed for all of us. May God bless us as we think about Psalm 91 today.